we are going to explore the worldwide theme of insecure. And Marta is bringing this great perspective. Uh, she's a writer, a podcaster, and a woman, a woman empowerment coach. While living in such uncertain times, Marta believes that self-awareness has never been more important and can really fuel our creative spirits and it can help us, live, uh, help us to navigate the discomforts of life. She says that focusing your attention on what you can control, such as how much you know about yourself and awareness of how you feel, that becomes a tool that you can use to consistently rely on to find security and assurance and to light the fire on your journey. Marta's gonna share a bunch of key insights on using uh, the Enneagram, a tool for self-discovery and how to observe and honor all of our own insecurities and translate them into long-term unstoppable creative energies. As Marta has noted the title of her presentation, only you can become an expert on you. So why not take the time to do so? Welcome to the stage, Marta Spurk. And if you wanna unmute, let's give her a round of applause, a proper round of applause. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited. Good morning, everybody. Can I just start by saying I love this illustration so much. It is amazing. I actually went in, um, to the illustrator's profile to see when she first posted it. And I just wanted to share as well um, the quote that she had on there. And one of the things that she said, because it really captures what I believe and um, that has everything to do with this theme. And another thing too, is that uh, a little bit about me, I'm originally from Brazil. And yesterday was a very special day for me. It's like this week, everything is coming together. Um, I passed my citizenship interview just yesterday. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, when I saw this illustration and I looked at it, it just brought me back home instantly because the green, the birds, and to be speaking on this theme that has everything to do with my work as an empowerment coach. And then to see uh, this illustration bring me back to my origins. It was just really special. And I wanted to read really quickly what uh, Rachel said in her post when she posted it on her Instagram. She says, this world is so amazingly beautiful. We shouldn't rob ourselves of soaring, seeing it from all sorts of perspectives because of some unfounded fears. Let loose the balloon and fly. I love that. And it is so true. And our insecurities really are some unfounded fears. And my hope today is to kind of show you through the eyes of the Enneagram how these fears, although they are unfounded, they come through from the lens of your personality type. And once you understand that, then it's easier for you to identify these insecurities and come to terms with it and uh, overcome them because you find the security in who you are, not outside of yourself, but within yourself. And so my hope for today is that you will learn to see your beauty without a compliment and without a mirror because those things are outside of us. You can't control when somebody compliments you and uh, you will have to go and look at your reflection somewhere to see who you are. Instead of depending on that, look within and find that assurance in who you are within yourself. But in order to do that, you have to get to know yourself. So I really believe that we are as people, a mosaic of so many different things. And I mean, speaking for myself, I'm from a different country. I grew up in a completely different culture, even though I've been obsessed with American culture for a long time, hence why I am here. Um, been teaching English for over 20 years, and there's just many different things that make up who I am. Um, the environment you know, that you grew up, grew, grew up in, your country, your family, your life story. And um, one of the things that you can actually dig into and understand more is your personality type. And that's why I love the Enneagram. Um, and some people may think, you know, it's a way of categorizing or labeling yourself. But if you study into the Enneagram, you will see that it really is such an insightful tool not to label you but to help you understand why you do the things you do. And this is so relevant when we talk about insecurities because you will start noticing once you pay closer attention to yourself, how certain things 
get to you more than others. And you probably noticed this, you know, with your spouse, significant other, friends, any other relationship in your life that usually the conflict arises when you think something is important and the other person does not agree with that. And why does that happen? Because we're different, right? We're so unique and our personality type comes into play in that sense. Something that may be offensive to me or may be hurtful to me may not be a big deal for you. And why is that? Because we are so different and understanding your personality type can really help you understand why you feel insecure in certain areas. Whereas for your friend, that is not a big deal. She can get up, talk in front of people or do whatever. And you have that insecurity. You have that um, blockage in certain ways. And it is because of your personality type. And I know we were talking before uh, starting here that some of you started digging into your personality type and your Enneagram and started resonating with a lot of it. And it's really beautiful as you start um, digging into your type and um, seeing how it really makes sense. And it's really spot on with the Enneagram. And so the Enneagram has actually nine types. And if you haven't taken the test, I highly encourage you to take it. Um, and I can, we can provide the link for a free test or several free tests online that you can take. Um, and these are the names of the nine types. Depending on the website that you go, the names might be a little bit different, but overall, these are them, the reformer, the helper, the achiever, individualist, investigator, loyalist, enthusiast, challenger, and the peacemaker. And what's interesting is that um, as you read through the definitions, you will probably see little bits and pieces of yourself in many of them. But there is usually a dominant one. So that's why I encourage people, even if they get um, results that are very close together, the more you investigate the types, and there are so many Instagram accounts out there with explanations and different things uh, specific for the Enneagram. So I encourage you to go look for those too. Um, you will see that there is a dominant one and you will instantly identify yourself, especially in the weaknesses um, and the strengths too, and in seeing how the lens that you see the world really creates certain insecurities more than others. And it really allows for you to um, see yourself in a different way. And we were talking about this before too, about how there is a healthy and a not so healthy way of operating out of who you are. And I think we've all witnessed this, right? Um, in, your, in your healthy or in your happy space and in your low, not so, not so healthy, not so happy space, we all navigate through that throughout the day, throughout you know, the weeks and years. And the more you become aware of the things that get to you and the things that are important to you, the things that move you, the more you can be intentional with how you operate. So it's not so much autopilot. You're not reacting to situations. You're actually being intentional with your reactions. So this is what I want us to focus on today is how you can actually take advantage of your insecurities to rise above them and use them as fuel because you will understand yourself so well, you can capitalize on the challenges and see challenges as really an opportunity to grow and to transform instead of being taken down by the challenges. So if you know your type, you know, you're resonating already with what I'm talking about. And so I really believe that self-awareness can help us in this, um, in this sense of insecurities because it's not that the insecurities are going to go away. We all have insecurities. Let me just put that out there. Every single person, even the one person that you admire that inspires you, they are insecure about something. And it is most likely connected to their personality type, to the thing that they value so much that if they even think about failing in that area or not fulfilling that in that area, they're going to feel insecure. So we all feel that, but it is different. So that's why when you look at somebody that is different from you, probably a, a different personality type or somebody operating out of a healthier way of their personality type, you may think, oh, that person is so sure of themselves, they have no insecurities. And that is not true. They are, they're either more self-aware so that they can capitalize on those challenges or reframe them, right? Um, or they are a completely different personality type than you, which means they don't struggle with the same things that you do. So that's why comparison is, is tricky because how can you compare 
with somebody else that is a different personality type that values different things than you do. So I have here an idea of reframing challenges um, with, with different questions. Because when we talk about operating out of our autopilot, which is the not very aware version of ourselves, the reactive uh, version of ourselves, there's usually one question that we ask ourselves a lot. And that is relevant to your um, personality type. And I chose the one here that um, is my type, which is the achiever, uh, because I believe that this is the type that seeks the most external validation from, from, all, from everybody and compared to all of the other types. And they're very goal-oriented. And the question that we tend to ask ourselves a lot is, what can I accomplish? Other personality types may look at a situation and instantly see what is wrong in this picture, how can I fix it? That's, that's the reformist, the perfectionist. They look for the mistakes, they look for the problems instantly. And that is actually the type that I attract the most, my husband, my best friends, uh, which is so tricky because I tend to look at how can I excel in this? And, and they look for the wrong things. So it's, it's tough being in that position because they always criticize. But they criticize from a place of love because they want to make it better. But for another person that is in that situation, they, they see that as criticism. So I take as criticism and then it becomes something personal. You see how tricky that is when you are in different relationships and it's like they're seeing it from that way with very good intentions. You're seeing from your perspective and you take it as an offense. And Sometimes that's not the intention at all. So I used here, what, I, what can I accomplish? But you can think, I invite you to think about the question that you tend to ask yourself a lot. And if you know your personality type, this is even easier. Are you, are you asking, how can I fix this? Are you asking, how can I help? And in, in certain situations, if you can't find a way to help, you may think that you're worthless. In certain situations, if you can't find a way to fix a problem, you may think that you're worthless. So that's your insecurity. And for me, if I see myself in a situation where I cannot do anything to excel, I may think that I'm worthless. And so how can you reframe that? What are questions that I can ask myself in that situation? What actually gives me worth? Is doing something here was going to give me worth? No, I have worth regardless of my actions. I am what I am and that's beautiful and who I am. Going back to my quote, see your beauty without a compliment without a mirror. So even if you can't fix this situation, you're still amazing. You are still you and that's all you need. Who am I when I have nothing to do? That's a big one for me because I can't sit, sit still. Am I okay if no one validates me? What will happen if I am seen as flawed? That is a huge hard one for threes because they want to do everything perfectly. And that's why we had but a lot with ones that are the perfectionists because the perfectionist, nothing is ever good enough for them. So then when you talk to a three and you tell them this is not good enough, they just fall apart because they have to be the best. What will happen if I actually fail? And so I don't want to exclude any of the other types, but the reason why I chose these specific questions, talking about um, seeking external validation and, and, and focusing on the three is because as creatives, I feel like, while we have an upper hand in self-awareness because we are, our self-expression comes so naturally to us, we are doing this work and putting it out there, which means it is getting judged. So even though I don't want to exclude any of the other Enneagram types, I think the three exemplifies the, 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 the the complexity of living in society and, and having relationships with other people because you're constantly being judged and you feel that, you know? So I feel like even though I am an exacerbated version of that, not everyone worries so much about being validated. Everyone does worry about being validated a little, a little bit, but I do more <laughs> than more people because of my uh, personality type. So I feel like even though the, the creatives have this upper hand, they are being judged and so therefore the insecurities can play a huge part in our work as well because it can create insecurities when you feel judged or when you don't get the recognition that you feel like you deserve for something. And so today I want to encourage you to see your worth without that validation and without the fear of being judged. 
because we are, as soon as we are here in front of everybody, we are going to be judged, but that does not take away from your worth and from your beauty. So understanding more of yourself will shield you to, uh, from those insecurities a little bit better because people's opinions of you and your work will not determine who you are. It's separated. It doesn't define you. You are who you are and that's enough. And that is beautiful. <laughs> and I hope uh, people resonate with this, even if you're not a type three. And so when we're talking about uncertain times, when my goodness, so many circumstances that we can control, what do you do? What can you do? You can focus on what you can control, which is yourself and focus on the choice that you have in every reaction that you have to situations because um, being empowered to me is taking responsibility for everything in my life, the good and the bad. Not that I can control the circumstances around me, but the way I react to them is my choice, which means my attitude is my choice. So why not focus on the, the best of me instead of the worst of me? Because especially for me, it's easier for me to focus on the best of me when I have people telling me that I'm so great. But what if you have no one telling you that you're great? What do you do? You have to tell yourself that. So focus on what you can control and what can you control? You can start by noticing yourself. You're there. You're amazing, right? You are a person inside of, inside of you and you deserve your attention. Instead of seeking so much for other people's attention and other people's recognition, start with yourself. And then when that external recognition comes, it'll be a bonus. It'll just be a confirmation of what you already know. Listen to yourself. What have you been telling yourself? Pay attention to the questions you've been asking yourself. Is it, what can I fix? Is it, how can I help? Is it, how can I mediate the situation? Sometimes you don't have to do anything. You just have to be. And in being who you are, you are already doing a lot. You are already doing everything because only you are you. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for not honoring who you are, for downplaying your powers and your amazingness, for depending so much on others to show you how great of a person you are and how much you can contribute to the world just by being who you are and then empower yourself. And I truly believe there is a sequence to this. First you notice, and I love using the analogy of even, you know, romantic relationships. You have to even notice that that person is there to then start investigating. Hmm. I think I like this, you know, it, it really, and your relationship with yourself really is like our relationship with somebody else. In fact, I believe our relationship with ourselves is the basis for every other relationship because we end up seeking for, from others what we need to get from ourselves. And then because you can't control other people, you don't receive that from them, you get frustrated. So why not start giving yourself what you want from others and then, like I said, once you receive that from others, it'll just be that bonus. And in empowering yourself is reminding yourself of your strengths, reminding yourself of your achievements, reminding yourself of your greatness, because you can. Going back to only you can be an expert in you, then why not do that? Why not remind yourself of how amazing you are, of all the things that you've already accomplished, of just the essence of who you are. Remind yourself of that because no one is going to be around you or with you all day long telling you, hey, you did this great. Hey, you did this amazing. But you are with you. You're the person you spend the most time with. So why not be kind to yourself? Why not love yourself? That's how you identify and overcome insecurities and use insecurities as challenges to fuel your innate abilities. And then you transform yourself and not into something else, not into somebody else. You transform yourself into the healthiest version of who you are, always reaching for the more elevated version of who you are. All right. And with that, I want to sing my song, which um, if you don't know, there is actually a band that wrote a song uh, for each Enneagram type. And I highly encourage you to go um, 
look for it because once you identify with your type and you listen to your song, you're probably going to ball your eyes out. I did. And I still do every time I, I listen to it because, um, the instruments, the lyrics, everything. And there, and then there are podcast episodes where the author, um, and the writer, the songwriter and performer, he explains his choice. So for the creatives, this is like wonderland. You guys need to go check this out. He explains why he used every single instrument and the lyrics based on the personality type. And he brings an Enneagram expert onto the podcast to uh, expand on that and explain why those things are the way that they are. It's absolutely amazing. Go look for it. The band is called Sleeping at Last and Atlas is the name of the album. And so this is three. And uh, this is one of the, the lyrics. And again, my hope for you today, even if you're not a type three, I finally see myself through the eyes of no one else. I want you to see you for who you are and love it and own it. And then you will see how your creative work is going to transform into something even more beautiful because first and foremost, you are accepting it instead of waiting for others to accept it first. All right. So you're ready for my song. <laughs> Let me pull up my lyrics here just to make sure. I got it. And I haven't been checking the chat. I don't know if I should. Let me know if I need to. I can do questions and, and read through it after, I guess. Let me know, Dave. Interrupt me if you need. No, you're great. Okay. okay. Awesome. All right. So here we go. If you want to close your eyes and feel it, do whatever you want. Maybe I've done enough. Your golden child grew up. Maybe this trophy isn't real With or without it, I'm good enough Maybe I've done enough Finally catching up For the first time I see an image of my broken is totally worthy of love. Maybe I've done enough. And I finally see myself through the eyes of no one else. It's so exhausting on the silver screen where I play the role of anyone but me and I finally see myself unabridged and overwhelmed a mess of a story I'm ashamed to tell but I'm slowly learning how to break this spell. I only want what's real to let my heart feel what it feels. Gold, silver, bronze, hold no value here. Where work can rest or equally. I only want what's real. I set aside the highlight reel and leave my greatest failures on display with an asterisk worthy of love anyway. That's it. All right. Thank you. And my last slide is my contact info, which I think the presentation went off, but feel free to con uh, connect with me in any of these platforms. Um, it's just March Spark everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. I have a YouTube channel. I do some cover songs too, so you can go support my singing <laughs> there too. Um, and I have a community for women with my empowerment coaching. You can just look for it on Facebook, The Empowered woman community. Thank you so much.